Welcome to EM Toxcast. Today we are going to be talking about mushroom poisoning. And it is the season for mushroom poisoning. If you walk around, you'll start seeing mushrooms popping up, especially after there's been a bit of a rainfall. In North America, we're going to see these all over for the next couple of weeks to months. And we are going to see patients who forage for delicious mushrooms and get themselves into a wee bit of trouble if they pick the wrong one. And sorting out whether a mushroom is poisonous or not has always been a challenge. It's, I would say, nearly impossible, except for ex expert mycologists, to be able to uh, identify a mushroom that has been sort of half-eaten and cooked. Uh, many times uh, the folks are not entirely sure. It can help if they tell you what they thought they were getting. That will put it into a category of what the shape or size uh, or characteristics might be. But for most clinicians, the best way to go is to sort them into a couple of groups. The old maxim in emergency medicine was that anyone who developed symptoms within six hours of a mushroom ingestion was very likely not to have long-term toxicity. Anyone who had a delayed presentation, in other words, they told you they ate a mushroom at noon the day before and came in feeling sick, was someone that you really needed to worry about the development of and organ toxicity, and generally that was kidney failure uh, and uh, liver failure. And so many, many moons ago, back in New York when I was a tox fellow, I worked with one of the sea spies who was at Hudson Valley Poison Center at the time. Great guy, and I cannot remember his name, so if he's listening, please shoot me an email so I can give you proper credit. Uh, we came up with a mnemonic. It was called Goa Pick'em. The GOA stood for mushrooms that were likely to present with delayed toxicity, that is to say, have no early symptoms within six hours. And the pickum stood for the mushrooms that were going to cause symptoms within that early six-hour period and in all probability not lead to permanent toxicity. That was Goa pickum. That was a couple decades ago. And things have changed. And the bright line between six-hour mushrooms um, before and after is not so clear anymore. That's because there's been a couple of mushrooms identified that give both early and late symptoms. So let's go over these and see if we can come up with a new approach or at least refine the old approach. And what I did was I took our old mnemonic, go a pick em, and I turned it into gotta pick em, And that will help you remember the uh, mushrooms that give you the delayed toxicity, the mushrooms that give you the immediate onset, and the mushrooms that give you both delayed and immediate onset. So let's start with the delayed toxicity. There are three that we, I'm sorry, there are four, there used to be three, there are now four that we know cause delayed toxicity. And G-O-T-A are the way to remember those. G stands for the gyrometrin mushrooms. These are the false morels. They're metabolized to monomethyl hydrazine. And that will give you seizures, which you will treat with pyridoxine. The O stands for arelanine, which are the quaternaria species, and they'll give you oliguric renal failure. The T is a new one, relatively speaking. It's tricholoma equestre, man on horseback or yellow knight. And this leads to rhabdo and myocarditis also in a delayed fashion. And of course, the most famous one is the A, amatoxins, amanita and gallerina species. They have toxins that inhibit RNA polymerase and are a major cause of uh, especially hepatic, but hepatic renal and pancreatic failure. So those are the delayed longer than six hours. The less than six hour mushrooms are the PICEMs, P-I-C-E-M, P standing for psilocybin, one of the characteristics is that it bruises blue. These have an LSD serotonergic effect, the magic mushrooms, if you will. Then you have ibotenic acid mushrooms, the I. These are the Amanita muscaria, not to be confused with the, the, all the other Amanitas. They have ibotenic acid that's converted to muscumol and ha basically have a CNS effect. Uh, can be sedating, sometimes impedes, can cause uh, stimulation, seizures, uh, shakes, muscle activity, things like that. 
The coprine mushrooms are basically a disulfuran reaction, and patients will get away with this if they have no alcohol when they ingest these mushrooms. These are coprinus, also known as the inky caps, and they have a characteristic sort of staining, black staining of the area around the mushroom. The E is the catch-all for a large group of mushrooms called LBMs, little brown mushrooms, and they cause a lot of vomiting, diarrhea, and GI upset. As long as they do that within six hours, then you think they might be within this group or this group, which we'll talk a little bit uh, later about. And then last, you have the muscarine-containing mushrooms. These are the ones that give you the cholinergic appearance, clitocybe and inocybe mushrooms, a.k.a. the sweaters. And they give you peripheral muscarinic effects, but no nicotinic effects. So peripheral muscarinic cholinergic look without the nicotinic effects. Now, the troubling ones are these two, alenic norleucine or amanita smithiana, which will give you some early GI and then a late, although reversible, renal failure. And the paxillus mushrooms, which lead to paxillus syndrome. And this is also early GI, but delayed immune-related renal failure and hemolytic anemia. So that's the mnemonic. Got to pick them. Uh, it should help you when you're taking your tox call or when you're in the emergency department trying to sort through things. It is no longer a safe bet to say that early GI symptoms get you out of the woods. Uh, and so, unfortunately, all this is going to complicate life for all of us as we sort through these things and try to figure out what mushroom our patients who are ill took. So that's the mnemonic. I hope it's helpful. Go ahead and uh, let me know what you think at, at Tox Board Prep or at RJ Hamilton MD. And I hope you enjoyed it. I'd particularly like to hear if you've got any other mushrooms or find any other mushrooms that may um, bust the old maxim of go a pick em and may, I might add to our new mnemonic gotta pick em to figure out which mushrooms are which. Okay, thanks, and uh, talk to you later.